the group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mele Kiari, has clocked one year in office and within that time has been able to project the figure of a fearless reformer on the basis of decision taking policies implemented and strategic steps initiated to open up the oil giants. For instance, for the first time in a very long time, under the stewardship of Mr. Kiari, this year released the report of an internal audit and by doing so demonstrated the purpose the proposed unbundling process could actually be possible. For a better understanding of this reform in the past one year, Whistler.ng, an online uh, news site, has published an expose, ti expose titled Reforming the Giant. And joining us from Arise Abuja Studio to have a comprehensive conversation about this is Emmanuel Ogbeche, journalist and editor at large, Whistler.ng. Mr. Ogbeche is also the chairman, Nigerian Union of Journalists, Federal Capital Territory Chapter. Welcome. Uh, to the program this morning. Good morning, Mano. Good morning, Thank Mano. You. Thank you very much. All right, it's a pleasure talking to you this Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I, I, I just want to start from a very important point. For the first time in a long time, we saw the books of the NNPC, another giant stride. Uh, may I call it revolutionary stride, you know, by Mele Kiari there. Because that case looks like a hot potato. For, for quite some while, nobody wants to publish the reports of the NNPC and the likes. So what, what's your take about this? Well, um, you remember when um, Malam Kerry assumed office in July last year, he did promise some reforms, and one of which was transparency. That was why Operation White was launched by the NNPC. And to keep to his um, pledge that um, reforms will be brought to the oil giant, we saw the release of the audited report after over four decades. That speaks to the issues because when you look at the financial statement or the audited report that was released, you begin to imagine the sort of rot and the sort of um, losses that were being incurred by past um, GMDs. Uh, this is not to take away from what um, strides they achieved during their time, but the issue of transparency and accountability is key. And it's been lacking all these years. And for us to have seen that um, a refinery was running at a uh, loss and incurring expenditure of over 65 billion tells you how much we needed this reform. So, so far, so good. We, one has to give a pat on the back to Malam Kerry for what he has been able to achieve within one year, especially because industry watchers, stakeholders are all applauding this singular feat. If other NMPC GMDs have been doing this, one will expect that there'll be greater measure of transparency that Nigeria will not have suffered so much losses it has incurred over the years. If just one, just one, and there was an expenditure by Kaduna Refinery of 65 billion and did not make a dime, that tells you if the rest of the years are to be released, what will come out of it? It is just unimaginable. Well, uh, Emmanuel, you recall that uh, when Mele Kiari took over, he announced an agenda which he called TIP, which was uh, Transparency, Accountability, and Performance Excellence. You've talked about one leg of the reform yes. that he promised to carry out, which is the transparency, the publication of audited accounts for the first time in 43 years of the uh, NMPC. Could you comment on other aspects of the reform that he has carried out? And I understand uh, you had a publication called Reforming the Giant. Will you take us through some of the issues you covered in that publication? Well, uh, this uh, publication, which is um, a keepsake, has a um, high provocative value, um, not just about the transparency. We've seen harmony, industrial harmony within the system. This is the first time in a very long while you will find that there are no bickerings, there are no infightings between the NNPC and the supervising ministry, the Ministry of Petroleum. And uh, also, NNPC is on a path to profitability. The downstream sector is competing favorably 
with other segments, other independent marketers, other producers of lubricants. For the first time, we saw the NNPC launch its lubricants into the market. We've seen the launch of the, the formal launch of the Ajakuta Kaduna Kano pipeline project, which has been in the works for over a decade plus. All of this speaks to the fact that the tape agenda is on course. Before now, you know Dr. Abati that it was on head of for the on, for the sort of restructuring we have seen where departments had to be merged because they want a lean and robust administrative mechanism in place at the oil corporation. So far, so good. One can only say that um, Mela Carey has his eyes focused. Yes, critics will say this is just one year. But one year speaks to the fact that he's keeping to his pledge that reforms will be implemented. And that is exactly what he's doing. What this publication did was not just to x-ray what um, the NNPC does. It also looked at other government policies because we spoke to a whole number of um, government functionaries, including the secretary to the government of the Federation. We spoke to the Minister of Justice. We spoke to the Minister of Mines and Steel and all chief operating officers and um, a few managers within the NNPC structure. Well, uh, Emmanuel, well, okay, good work there, but uh, where is this publication available? Is it available on your site or it's available in bookshops? Because oftentimes we just see these publications uh, on television uh, for the benefit of persons who would like to have copies or access the publication. Where can we get it? But, uh, we, we clearly understand um, th th those um, challenges. Um, what we intend doing is that we will ensure that all ministries, departments, agencies, commissions, and diplomatic um, commissions and um, embassies here in Nigeria get copies of this. We are yet to upload the copy onto our site because uh, we want a formal presentation. After that, we are going to make it available on our site. But the most um, instructive part of it is that the publication is free, and um, we will ensure that we deliver as much as possible to state governments as well. So we want to assure Nigerians that uh, this publication will be available to them because it is at no cost. Thank you. Now it's refreshing to hear a GMD of NMPC share the bemusement that most Nigerians feel about our moribund refineries. Usually what we get is some kind of sphinx-like silence on this glaring fluorescent pink elephant in the room. Either that or weak excuses as to why this sector has been so badly mismanaged. But Mede Kiari has addressed it and talked about past failures, a lack of proper strategy, poor advisory and now has said there's a clear strategy and a target to get the refineries working. Can you shed some light on that in view of the fact that I'm sure you saw this SDN report that Nigeria imports low quality, dirty fuel, which really should not be the case? Yes, um, that report has left um, a lot of us um, worried. Uh, when I saw that report, I just imagined that it would be better for me to buy from an illegal refinery in the Niger Delta rather than patronize um, the filling <laughs> rather than patronize the filling stations. Uh, but that said, um, going back to the agenda he said, he did um, promise that uh, the refineries will come on stream during the life of this administration. Unfortunately, he came in um, barely uh, four years to the end of this um, government after having spent, uh, the government has spent uh, five years in power. But if we were to assess him by the strides he has made thus far, one would be confident that if not all the refineries are back on stream by 2023, we should at least have two to three of the four refineries working. And um, I, I know that there are 
already talks in on how to reform the fineries and probably bring in private hands to also assist government in delivering in this direction. Right. Uh, let, let's talk about something too uh, that has that has endeared a lot of people to uh, Milikiari. Uh, and picking up from what Dr. Abadi talked about, number one, transparency. Transparency in terms of, you know, product pricing, uh, bringing products in, and the likes uh, with the NNPC. I mean, what do you have to say about that? Because, I mean, for the first time in a long time, we have enjoyed reduced price of petrol. Uh, it was in tandem with international reality, although some people will say it could have been lower than that. But these are some wins. I, I think the last time I hear that, they have, that's when I saw a reduction in, in pump price, was during the time of uh, Umar Musa Aradua. Since then, we, we've never seen one. Well, um, um, the, the UNNPC wants to work uh, with market realities. and. Um, but until the refineries are properly fixed, we, we just have to do with what is on ground by allowing government sometimes to determine so that marketers don't run away with um, Nigerians. Um, one major thing that has been done is marketers can determine real time because all of NNPC's operations in terms of pricing at the marketing are digi digitalized. You can see it real time. You can determine how the market swings. So that is a plus to the reform agenda. We, we, we are, I am optimistic that Nigerians will get to buy fuel at a cheaper rate very soon. Because uh, we all know wh what has happened with COVID-19. Resources have dwindled. There are challenges of governments all over the world, and everybody is trying to see how they can balance their books. So it is not as if government is unmindful, the NNPC in particular, is unmindful of uh, the concerns you've, uh, you've pointed out. All we need is patience, cooperation, and um, to keep government on its feet by interrogating the issues as we're doing now. Well, it's good to, to hear that, I mean, you have done uh, an extended report on one year of uh, Mele uh, uh, tenure in office. I wrote on the subject myself yesterday, and I raised two issues there. I said, one, um, the refineries looks like government can't handle the refineries. They, they seem to have run out of ideas, and that perhaps the best thing to do is to just privatize those refineries, so that going forward, we have Diamond Refinery, we have other refineries that are privately owned. And then secondly, that NMPC is overstretched along the oil and gas value chain. And that NMPC probably needs to just get out of the retail business because there is a contradiction in terms there. Uh, government brought in private investors at the downstream level. And then you have NMPC uh, setting up mega stations and competing uh, with the private investors and making it difficult for people who are borrowing money to do business, whereas NMPC uses uh, government money. What are your thoughts on these two issues, which are not necessarily my original ideas, but ideas that are out there uh, within the public space? Yes, Dr. Abati, you know that the issue of privatizing the refineries Hello? Yes, Dr. Abati. You know that the issue of the refineries um, is a very touchy one. Uh, people make political capital out of that. You need to gain the confidence of Nigerians before you proceed to the issue of privatization. And thus far, one will be optimistic that Nigerians are being confident that this government is being honest and transparent in its dealings with how the refineries, if eventually they are, go, they are going to be privatized. Because if you do not have the buy-in of Nigerians, you cannot simply delve into the issue of privatizing those. I agree completely with you that government needs to diversify its holdings in the oil business. 
but you know that oil is the lifeline of this country. So if you leave it into the hands of private individuals wholly, Nigerians will pay a heavy price for that. And that is not what I know you want us to do. On the issue of NNPC being involved in the downstream sector, now, people have always made the argument that government cannot run a business. But we have seen with the Nigeria liquefied natural gas that government can actually be involved in business and that is profitable. Look at the final investment decision on train seven. That is going to bring in over 20 billion, over 40,000 jobs. And if you say NNPC is taking on too much because it's in the downstream sector and opening retail, let's be competitive. Let the private individuals compete with what is obtainable. What I will agree with you is that we should break monopoly. NNPC shouldn't be the sole distributor of petroleum products. There are other marketers that have invested, that have taken loans, like you rightly mentioned. But let's have a competitive environment. Whoever anybody wants to patronize, they are free. After all, I still buy fuel from non-NNPC-owned filling stations, and I believe you do too. So we should give government the benefit of the doubt and see how this pans out. Your problem of vandalism, which we touched on earlier with that SDN report. What efforts have been made in that regard, and also the smuggling of petroleum products? Well, um, if you look at statistics over the course of um, the past year, you will see that the issue of vandalism has greatly reduced because. Um, other, the otherwise um, restive Niger Delta or oil producing communities are not at war as they are. And we hope that the NNPC will continue to be the arbiter between oil companies and oil hosting communities. And um, if that continues, I think that the issue of vandalism will be reduced to the barest minimum, which it has. Um, it requires constant um, dialogue and interaction between oil companies and host communities. And if the NNPC continues to go in the direction which is doing presently, then one is hopeful that um, vandalism will be reduced, but not entirely um, eradicated. So, so far, so good. That is how the situation is. I, I think I also want to talk. Can I get your first question? Yes. Okay. No, she did ask um, an earlier question about, before the issue of vandalism. No, it was actually vandalism first, then smuggling of petroleum products. Okay. Well, uh, you know, when President Muhammad Buhari decided um, to shut Nigerian borders with its um, neighbors, the issue of uh, smuggling uh, greatly reduced. But it is not um, an entirely an NNPC thing. The security agencies have a whole lot of role to play in the direction of smuggling. The police, immigration, customs, DSS, all the security agencies have a hand in this direction. But if we look at the statistics that we have now, that uh, oil smuggling to neighboring countries have greatly reduced because the borders were shut, one would hope that government would have used the period of the border had been shot to work out an effective strategy to ensure that petroleum products don't get through the border through legal means. That is my hope. And we look forward as the borders will be reopened uh, not too long from now. We, let's just wait and see how this works out. I said I to ask a question along that line. I wanted to talk about uh, tankers, super tankers of sold crude on the high sea. We've had that as a recurring decimal for a while. I mean, what do you have to say about that? And secondly, I also want to talk about fiscal discipline in the NMPC at this point in time. Well, it's um, unfortunate what COVID-19 has done to global economy, including that of Nigeria. The issue of not having off takers on the high seas, it's um, entirely not the doing of any particular individual or government. 
because governments across the world are struggling. And um, since production in most parts of the world is not happening, so naturally it will follow that it was going to be difficult finding um, off-takers for Nigerian crude. But being that we have the finest crude in the market, we can only hope that with COVID-19, the ill wind of COVID-19 blowing away, we will be optimistic to find them um, off-takers on our crude very soon. On the issue of fiscal discipline, the tape agenda starts with transparency, then accountability. With what has been done thus far, one hopes that mechanisms are already in place. We have the statements of account and monthly, the publication of the monthly um, reports, financial reports of the NNPC is happening. When you do that, and when you take away, because he did promise that during um, when he came into office, Mela Karemi, that without discretion, there will be no corruption. So for you to have physical discipline, the issue of discretion down the line, the subsidiaries of the NNPC ought to be drastically reduced and monitored. Because once you do that, there is no way you will find top officers or those in the top echelon of the NNPC not demonstrating the fiscal discipline that has been promised. When you open your books for scrutiny to independent auditors, to independent organizations, then there is no way that corruption will find its footing within the system. So, it is not just enough that within one year, you have been able to say, okay, we are publishing the monthly reports of our doings, of our dealings, of our financial issues. It has to be sustained. Thus far, there is a mechanism in place to ensure that everybody keys into the tape agenda. And I, I am persuaded that anybody that is found wanting in this regard will be shown the way out. That is the only way we can guarantee fiscal discipline, transparency, and accountability, which has been the bane of the NNPC all these years. Well, certainly we have every reason to be interested in the NNPC. NNPC alone uh, accounts for uh, about 55% of government revenue, 85% of uh, foreign exchange uh, receipts. But so far, so good for Mele Kiari, uh, one year in office. What should be his priorities going forward? Do you have anything to say in that regard? Well, for me and uh, for us at the Whistler, I, his priorities would be that he should stay focused. He should be non-political. He shouldn't be caught in the web of politicking. Because um, when you play into the hands of the powers that be, the tendency is for you to lose focus. and. Um, if he sustains this momentum, then there is hope that Nigeria can benefit from this oil resource. We haven't yet really talked about exploration and the fruits that have been yielded in that regard in northern Nigeria. What are your thoughts on that and where NMPC should take that? Well, we, we, we are aware that a few persons have um, raised them. Um, Concerns that we want, to, uh, we're talking about diversification, yet the um, oil exploration is happening uh, in the Gungula Basin and other areas, um, troughs within the north. We, we, we cannot um, extrude the fact that motors, vehicles will still run, despite the fact that electrical cars are coming. We, are, we cannot extrude the fact that oil still plays a major role in global politics and uh, uh, global economy. So we, the NNPC has um, invested a huge um, resource in the north to ensure that we expand our daily production, which we have seen a remarkable improvement to 2.3 million at a time before COVID-19. So uh, the issue of oil exploration in the north is a welcome development because in as much as Nigeria still relies heavily, 85% of direct foreign in, um, income investment in that direction, then we should give a pat on the back 
to the present NNPC and other ones that set the pace to search for oil in, um, in northern troughs and basins to ensure that we boost our oil production. After all, Saudi Arabia and the rest are investing in other technologies, are still mining oil and in, in, in other areas. So it's, um, it's um, a welcome development that he has sustained this. And there are prospects that very soon we are going to reap the dividends of the huge investments we have seen over the years. All right, uh, just quickly and very briefly on this, I'd like to talk about, you know, the entirety of the NNPC itself as regards staff, remuneration and salaries. Uh, what's your take on that? I mean, there's been this talk about a lot of people not doing things that are great, that are earning big fat salaries in the NNPC. Well, I do not think the NNPC is an exemption to this rule. We could point to a few commissions and agencies that are earning, but I think that is a matter for the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission. I, that, that is just my take on that. Well, thank you very much, uh, Manuel Ubeche, for joining us this morning on The Morning Show.